Greetings. As always, it's a pleasure to have you join us. I'm Rick Peckman, Ministry Coordinator here at Detroit Lakes United Methodist Church. I've shared this before, but I love Nick's collage in intro of nature every, mor every Sunday morning. And of course, the reflective music. Peace be upon you. May, today, may today's service um, guide us through the week, serving each other as disciples of Jesus. As always, we'll begin worship with song. And now our call to worship. Immortal, invisible, God of us all, God of glory and grace, God of justice and love, we praise God's great name, the great I am of the world. In awe, we worship our marvelous God. And please join me in our opening prayer. Gracious God, like a mother, you give us new life and make us your children in Jesus Christ. Look on us in your love and bring us to the inheritance that you promised. Grant this through Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen. Story for All Ages. Autumn. It's from the, a selection out of um, 12 Moons by the Year by Hal, by Hal Borland. It's, we've, we've been enjoying this at home. Quite a lot of collection of um, his thoughts. His, this one is on autumn. Another equinox occurred, and by those charts and markers we used to divide time and measure our lives, it is autumn. For a little while now, days and nights will be almost equal, dawn to dusk, dusk to dawn, and the sun will rise and set almost true east and true west. Then, or as it is, now, October, the 10th month of the 12 years, moving toward the winter solstice. So much for the arbitrary boundaries, which are for the almanacs and the record books, even less imperative than the figures on the sundial. The autumn with which we live is as valuable, is as variable as the wind. The weather and land itself. Its schedule is that 
of the woodland trees, the wild grasses, and the migrant birds. Go to northern Maine, and you can walk with frost. Go to Carolina, and you can bask in the last summer late sun. Travel north or south, and you touch the year in another place. Stay where you are, and autumn comes to you at its own time. Essentially, autumn is the quiet completion of spring and summer. Spring was the eagerness and beginnings. Summer was growth and flowering. Autumn is the achievement summarized, the harvest grain, the ripened apple, the grape in the press vine. Autumn is the bright leaf in the woodland and the open husk in the bittersweet berry, the froth of the asters on the roadside. Leave the equinox to the earth and record keepers, and no autumn is where you find it when it comes. See it, smell it, taste it, and forget the time of day or year. Autumn needs no clock or calendar. Enjoy this special season that we're in, autumn. Hal Borland's 12 Moons of the Year, a great collection of thoughts especially nature. Blessings. During the month of October, we are looking at a series on under construction, talking about how we are under construction as spiritual beings during our own journeys through life. There is a chart that shows development through different stages of a person's spiritual life. You'll see it briefly during the the sermon as it shows up on the screen. 
However, if you are interested in a copy of, of that particular chart showing the development of a person's spiritual life, call or email the church and we will see that you get a copy. We begin this month looking at the yearner and we read for our Bible lesson Paul's first letter to Timothy in chapter 1 starting with verse 12. Hear these words as I read them to you. I am grateful to Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has strengthened me, because he judged me faithful and appointed me to his service, even though I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and a man of violence. But I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief, and the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. But for that very reason I received mercy, so that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display the utmost patience, making me an example to those who would come to believe in him for eternal life. To the King of the Ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Here ends the reading from God's Holy Word. Would you pray with me, please? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of the hearts of each of these, your people, may be found acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. In 2003, Bill Murray starred in the film Lost in Translation, which won the Oscar that year for Best Original Screenplay. Bill Murray played the character of a wealthy movie star named Bob. Bob is in Japan, and after a tough day, he decides to relax in a hot tub when his cell phone goes off. It's his wife Lydia back in the States. While Bob has been away, she's hounding him about a remodeling job she's doing on his office back home. Lydia asks if this is a bad time. Bob replies that it's always a good time. She's caught long distance to Japan, but, but wants to discuss the remodeling. Well, the burgundy carpet isn't in. It's going to take 12 weeks. Do you like any of the other colors? Frustrated, Bob says, Whatever you like, I am completely lost. A little surprised by his tone, Lydia says, It's just carpet. But Bob says, That's not what I'm talking about. What are you talking about? Bob is really at a loss. I don't know. I just want to get healthy, you know. I want to take better care of myself. I'd like to start eating healthier. I don't want all that pasta. I would like to start eating like Japanese food. Taking his complaint personally, Lydia snaps. Why don't you just stay there and you can have it every day? Bob doesn't want to fight, so he changes the subject. How are the kids doing? Lydia says, they're fine. They miss their father, but they're getting used to you not being here. Do I need to worry about you, Bob? Deep down, Bob craves concern. He tells her only if you want to. But Lydia is in no mood for a guessing game. Bob, I've got things to do. i got to go. Despondent, Bob says, Okay. Lydia tells him, I'll see you. I mean, I'll talk to you later. They both hang up, and Bob slips slowly 
back down under the water. Many people in our culture are like Bob. They are adrift. They grasp for meaning. They are trying to make sense out of their lives, but they are failing at it. They feel lost. They know that something, something important is missing from their lives. They are yearners. They yearn for something to fill the emptiness in their souls. Today and over the next three weeks, we're going to talk about how we human beings are spiritual beings under construction. As we grow spiritually, we can see our lives changing in several describable ways. In order to measure our spiritual growth, and more importantly, to help others around us grow spiritually. We can speak of certain stages in our spiritual growth. And you can see the chart that shows these stages in spiritual development. Jesus gave the great invitation to each of us. He said, follow me, follow me and become my disciple. And so our goal is to grow as a disciple, a follower of Jesus, to become better and better at doing as he did and living as he lived. Jesus also gave each of his disciples the Great Commission. Go and make disciples of all nations. Therefore, we believe that our primary task as Christians and as the church is to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Now let's think about yearners a bit. Yearners have spiritual needs that may or may not be articulated. In the movie Lost in Translation, Bob was becoming vaguely aware of his spiritual needs. He felt an emptiness in his life. He knew life should have more to it, but he did not yet have the words to articulate his spiritual needs. What are the spiritual needs that yearners yearn to fulfill? They boil down to two. There is the need for meaning, to know that life has some purpose and that, there, that this is not all there is. And there's also the need to belong, to belong to something greater into which you can pour your life and from which you can gain nurture. Meaning and belonging are the two most basic spiritual needs of every human being. Yearners have no relationship with the church. No one listening to this sermon right now is a yearner. Even though you might still be trying to figure out what to do about some unmet spiritual need, you at least have found your way to a church's worship service. Yearners have not yet done so. Yearners might or might not have been related to the church sometime in the past. Some yearners are not so much unchurched persons as they are de-churched persons. Some of them might have been confirmed as teenagers and never been back to a church once their parents stopped making them go. Some of them might have been active in a church but left over some grievance or some conflict and never went back. Yearners have to be sought outside the church walls. If we really care enough about yearners to help them grow spiritually towards discipleship, then we will need to go to them out in the community to invite them in various ways. We cannot sit here and expect to attract them, not even if we have the best of programs and ministries for our own people. Yearners are secular. 
This means they do not think in religious terms. They are creatures of the greater culture, which in the United States is increasingly secular, meaning indifferent to religion. Yearners are mostly unfamiliar with church jargon. Church folks speak an insider language that outsiders like yearners don't know. For example, if you were never ever exposed to a Christian worship service, would you have any idea what a doxology or a chancel is? According to the most recent figures of the Association of Religious Data Archives, something like 33% of Becker County, Minnesota residents are not adherents of any organized religion. 33%. That is one out of every three persons. We can speculate about the many reasons why one third of our neighbors have chosen not to associate with any organized religion. For our purposes right now, the reasons are not the point. The point for us is that many of our neighbors are yearners, like Bob in the movie. Suppose you know Bob or someone like him. Are you going to leave Bob in his hot tub, drowning in his spiritual confusion? Jesus has told you, you who want to be one of his disciples, to go and make disciples. Isn't Bob a prospective disciple for you to try to make? The fact that Bob knows something is missing from his life, even if he can't quite name that something, shows that the Holy Spirit is already at work within him, quickening Bob's spirit to feel dissatisfied with the current state of his soul. That is the grace of God at work. We are to cooperate with that grace. How do you do that? How do you cooperate with the Holy Spirit working within the yearner's soul? Most yearners will not show up at a church on their own. Some do, but over 60% of the yearners who arrive at a church do so because they were invited by someone they already know. Therefore, simply invite a yearner to come with you to church or to watch one of our recorded worship services. That is the one most important thing you can do to help any yearner grow spiritually. Invite them to church. When this pandemic is finally over, offer to pick them up. Give them a ride. Offer to buy them Sunday breakfast if you have to. But invite them. Open your mind and your heart a moment now. Don't you know someone who is yearning to fill a space of spiritual emptiness in, in their life? Don't you know some friend, some relative, some associate, some neighbor who is like Bob? Next Sunday, we will explore with Pastor Deborah how a yearner becomes a seeker and how we can help seekers on the next stages of their spiritual construction. Ask Bob to join you at church or online. Bring some yearner with you. As we approach our prayer time together today, please keep these persons in your prayers. Pastor Chris, Betty, Jan, Bob and Gwen, Nels, Judy, Nancy, the volunteer firefighters who are fighting the wildfires out west, the family of Wilbur Joy on his death, 
and keep in your prayer these new members who joined our church last week, Cherie and Karen. And keep in your prayers also these confirmands who will be professing their faith and uniting with this congregation this coming week. Wyatt, Riley, and Cole. Let us be in an attitude of prayer. Most Holy God, we thank you that we stand in a long line of believers who have been faithful through the ages. You have led your people through trial and difficulty and have always set before them hope for today and hope for a better tomorrow. We pray that you would bless us in our time as we seek to be as faithful as our forebears. May we too know the faith that is filled with hope and things not seen. Give to us a faith like the grain of a mustard seed, which had small beginnings yet yielded large results. Give to us a faith to move the mountains of difficulty that come to each of us. Give us the faith that sees a distant goal and is willing to work to achieve it. Give to us a faith that has a vision of a new world where peace and love characterize the interactions of people and of nations and where war is no more. Give to us a faith such as Abraham's and Sarah's, which enable them to move forward not knowing their destination but trusting in your guiding providence. Give to us a faith that is able to endure those moments of personal disquiet and to trust that you are with us. Give to us a faith that sees the welfare of humanity as our business because it is the focus of your enduring love for your people. Give to us a faith that sees beyond the years to your eternal city. We pray not only for ourselves, but for all those whose situations are not so favorable as our own. Be with those who suffer, with those whose lives are diminished by disease, especially COVID-19, with those whose minds are anxious because of financial problems and inadequate means to provide for their needs, and for those who are in harm's way. All this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Today we're going to celebrate the Lord's Supper. If you need to pause the recording while you go and get a piece of bread and some grape juice, do so now and then start it up again when you return. Jesus is the one who invites us to his table to share together in the Lord's Supper. Because it's Jesus who does the inviting, all are invited to share in the Lord's Supper with us. You don't have to be a, a member of this congregation. You don't have to be a United Methodist. You don't have to be a part of any particular denomination to share in the Lord's Supper with us. All that is asked is that you seek forgiveness of your sins and acknowledge Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. As we share in the Lord's Supper, we remember the story. The story about that night when just before Jesus was betrayed and arrested, he shared in a last Passover meal with his disciples in an upper room in Jerusalem. During that meal, Jesus took some bread he gave thanks to God for the good gift of the grain, and he broke the bread and passed it around to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, for this is my body broken for you. Then after the meal, Jesus took a cup. Again, he gave thanks to God for the good gift of the grape, and he passed the cup around to his disciples, saying, Take and drink. For this is my blood, which seals the new covenant God makes with God's people. My blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. 
We are told that as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we are to do so remembering our Lord's death until he does come again. Let us pray. Gracious and almighty God, we give thanks to you for this day. We give thanks to you for the gift of life itself and that you desire to fill our lives with your own presence. By your grace, help us to receive your gifts. Help us especially to receive these gifts of the Last Supper, of, the, of Communion, of the Eucharist, so that we might indeed belong to Christ and he to us. And so we ask that you pour out your Holy Spirit now upon these gifts of bread in the cup, that they might be for us the body and blood of Jesus Christ. And pour out your Holy Spirit upon we who are gathered here, that we might be the body of Christ together. Make us one with Christ and one with each other, one in service to all the world. Amen. Let us join together in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us join together and eat of the body of Christ. Let us join together now in drinking together of the blood of Christ. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, you have given yourself for us. Help us now to give ourselves for others. Amen.
Please keep the following people in your prayers this week. Pastor Chris, Betty, Jan, Bob and Gwen, Nels, Judy, Nancy, and the family of Wilbur Joy. This week we celebrate with the following people. Happy birthday to Cole and Pamela. Church Council will meet here tomorrow night at 6.30. It will be decided at that meeting how we will move forward with worship. So watch for a letter and more information on that decision this week. On Wednesday, the UMW will meet at 1.30. Rick's Faithful and Inclusive Group will meet at 7.30 in the Fellowship Hall. And the Finance Committee will meet at 7.30 as well, but in the Fireside Room. At 6.30 on Wednesday evening, we will have a private confirmation service for our 11th graders who have been waiting a long time to get confirmed. This service is for the confirmands, their families, and guests invited by the confirmands only. We will record this service and upload it to YouTube so everyone can watch. Reva's Bible study will meet here at the church on Thursday at 10. And as always, you can mail your offering to the church at 885 Pembina Trail. You can give online through our website at dlumc.org, or you can drop off your offering with Beth in the office. Receive now the benediction. May the grace and peace that comes from our God, who creates, redeems, and sustains, be with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace. <laughs>